Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, so now that we have looked at and practiced the different inheritance patterns and we've looked at how traits are passed from parent to offspring, we now have to look at how our gene, so how does our DNA show our characteristics, show our phenotype? So how do we go from this like string of A's, T's, C's, and G's to I have brown eyes or I have curly hair? How do we go from this molecular structure to what we see in front of us on a daily basis when we look at other human beings or other organisms in general? So this is called gene expression. We are expressing our traits or expressing our genes. And the answer to this question is essentially protein synthesis. So synthesis means to make. So we're going to be making proteins, which basically means that we express all of our traits through proteins that our body makes based off of the DNA that it has. One great example of this is skin color. So we all have a gene that codes for a pigment called melanin. Melanin is a brownish pigment. The more melanin your skin makes, the darker your skin color, the less melanin your skin makes, the lighter your skin color. So someone like myself, I don't make a lot of melanin. Someone with a darker skin color makes a lot more melanin. The difference is in the genetics. We all have the gene that codes for the protein melanin, but there's also genetics in there saying how much to make. So that was the short answer. Let's look at the longer version. I put my face. That should be good. So like I was saying, gene expression is how we actually express our traits. So if our traits are coded in DNA, we need to be able to start with the DNA and then show what the DNA actually codes for. So like I was saying, we go from DNA to free earlobes. Um, protein synthesis. Synthesis means to make. We are making proteins. The DNA codes for proteins. And so that means that proteins are how we express our traits. So somehow we make proteins that create a free earlobe versus an attached earlobe. Um, and this diagram is kind of showing you the quick process version of this. We're going to be looking at it in just a little bit more detail. So we can break protein synthesis down into two steps. The first step is called transcription. Now, when you transcribe something, it sort of means to copy. So if you were taking notes off of your screen right now, based off of this slide deck, you would be transcribing the notes you see up here into your own notebook. Um, it's sort of like making a copy in a way. So if I were to take a piece of paper to a copy machine and make a copy of it, I would be transcribing it. Um, so in the case of our bodies, we transcribe DNA into a molecule called mRNA. And I'm going to come back to what mRNA is, I think, on the next slide. The second step is called translation. So very similar to how we might translate from one language to another. So from like English to Spanish or Chinese to Turkish or um, from like Finnish to hun Hungarian. I don't know. Um, we translate the language of nucleic acids, which is the language of DNA and RNA to the language of amino acids, which is the language of proteins. So two-step process, transcription, and then translation. Yeah, so like I said, before we get into the actual process, we have to talk about what this molecule RNA actually is. So RNA, it is very similar to DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. So they're very similar molecules. The difference is RNA is single-stranded. Remember, DNA is double-stranded. Because RNA is single-stranded, to make it more of a stable molecule, we have to use the nitrogenous base uracil, which we write with a U, instead of a thymine, which we write with a T. So basically, instead of using T's, we are now using U's which means when we have to pair RNA together, um, A is gonna pair with U, it is not gonna pair with T. So a helpful hint, if you are looking at DNA, it will contain T's in it. 
If you're looking at RNA, it will contain U's. Just one way to think about it. Um, there are three different types of RNA. So the first type is mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA. And basically, this is the RNA that is made during the transcription process. And then it's used as a template during translation. So it's kind of sending a message from inside the nucleus to outside the nucleus, which is where transcription takes place in the nucleus. Translation takes place in the cytoplasm. Next up, we have rRNA. And rRNA stands for ribosomal RNA, which means that this type of RNA makes the actual structure of the ribosome, which is one of the cell organelles that we looked at when we were looking at cell organelles. So ribosomes are actually made out of RNA, and this is also the location of translation. So remember, ribosomes, they can be free-floating inside the cytoplasm of the cell, or they can be attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the cell. Either way, they're made of RNA, and this is where the actual translation process takes place. tRNA, T stands for transfer RNA, and tRNA helps with the translation process. It basically brings the correct amino acid over to the ribosome that pairs with the mRNA to translate from nucleic acids to translate from RNA into amino acids or into proteins. So let's look at the quick steps in transcription, and then you are going to practice doing the actual transcribing. Um, so for transcription, we are looking at DNA. It is located inside the nucleus of the cell. And basically the DNA is going to unwind itself kind of like what you're seeing here. So we have our wound up DNA. It is unwound right here. So we can see our A's, T's, C's, and G's and what they pair with. Um, we're gonna have to use what's called RNA polymerase, which is an enzyme that reads the DNA and transcribes it into mRNA. So that's what you're seeing right here. So this red is the mRNA that is being made from reading the DNA. And then let me stop moving my mouse so we can see the bottom picture. Um, but basically, once you reach a stop signal in the DNA, once the gene is done being transcribed, the mRNA or the RNA polymerase is going to release itself from the DNA, and the DNA is going to rewind itself back up, and you are left with your mRNA chain, which is a transcription product. So it says the same thing as the DNA. It's just instead, it's, it's like it's very similar to like if I'm talking English with an American accent versus speaking English with a British accent. So very, very similar, says the same thing, means the same thing. All right, so to show you what this actually looks like because that wasn't a great picture and it's hard to talk through and not like draw it out at the same time. This video, if I can figure out where to put my face, um, this video, will actually show you the animation of what transcription looks like. And it also includes a description along with it. What I will say is this video does go into a lot more detail than what you are responsible for. So pay attention to words like DNA, mRNA, RNA polymerase, transcription, the rest of them. Don't really worry about the other molecules that are involved. Transcription is the process of making RNA from a DNA template. Some of the factors are involved in this process, including the process of making RNA from a DNA Some 
So that enhancer region they're talking about when I was using that melanin example, the enhancer region. So if your body produces more melanin, your enhancer region would say something different than someone who doesn't produce as much melanin. That's basically telling you how much of the protein to make. Transcription factors are required for successful transcription. The first is the The largest of the chemical factors. A component of this time is the All right, so hopefully that gave you a good visual and explanation of what this process actually looks like inside the nucleus of your cell. Um, now we get to practice doing the transcribing. So you're gonna be lean, mean, transcribing machines. A, hey, we're gonna act as RNA polymerase. Yeah, getting with that science. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So here's the deal. Here is our sequence of DNA. This sequence of DNA is representing some gene or some trait in your genome in your body. So we need to transcribe this sequence of DNA, which means that T is gonna have to pair with A, A is gonna have to pair with U, C is gonna have to pair with G, etc. So this is our DNA template. We're gonna create our mRNA chain. And like I said, T pairs with A, A pairs with U, C pairs with G. So this is very similar to DNA replication. However, we have to keep in mind that instead of A pairing with T, A is pairing with U. And there is a little, excuse me, there is a little reminder down here for us once all of this shenanigan can uh, hide itself. So A is going to pair with U, G is going to pair with C, G is going to pair with C. So UCC pairs with AGG. TAC is going to pair with uh, UAG. UAG. TTA is going to pair with AAU. G or CGT is going to be GCA. AAG is going to be UUC. TCC is going to become AGG. GTA is going to become CAU and ACT is gonna become UGA. So if you had trouble doing this, I suggest you pause, rewatch, um, try it out on your own before going forward. We're gonna try this again just to give you some extra practice. So again, we have our DNA template. We're gonna create our mRNA chain and we're doing the same thing. So we're still just base pairing our different nucleotides. So TAC is gonna be AUG. GTA is going to be CAU. And I'm going to ask you at this point to stop and pause the video and try to transcribe the rest of this DNA sequence on your own. I wasn't kidding. Pause the video. Pause the video. All right, so hopefully you did practice this on your own. Let's check your answers now together. So CCT is going to become GGA, ATT becomes UAA, CGA becomes GCU, GTG becomes CAC, CAA 
becomes G U U C A T. Oh, my favorite animal, cats. Uh, C A T becomes G U A. A C T becomes U G A. So hopefully your answers matched with what is now on the screen. We're going to do this one more time. So again, pause the video. I mean it. Pause the video. Do this on a piece of paper. See if you can successfully transcribe this strand of DNA. Do it. Pause the video. All right. So hopefully you again pause the video. Let's go over answers. Please compare what you have on your paper to what you see in front of you right here. So TAC pairs with AUG. GGG pairs with CCC. CTA pairs with GAU. TTA pairs with AAU. AAC pairs with UUG. CGT pairs with GCA. TGC pairs with A G or A C G, A T A pairs with U A U, A C T pairs with U G A. So again, please compare what you had on your paper to what you see on the screen. Please make sure you are understanding how to transcribe the sequence of DNA. You will be getting some more practice with this later on. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All right, so at this point, we are gonna pause here and we are going to look at translation in the next video. Again, make sure that you understand how to transcribe DNA into mRNA because we are gonna be building on it for the translation process. Also make sure in your vocab notebook, you now have transcription and protein synthesis filled in for your vocab notebook.